Hello, good morning and welcome to The Finance Show here on tiptv.co.uk. It's 10 a.m. on uh, Friday the 2nd of June. Let's get that right to Non-Farm Payrolls Day. And I'm joined by Mark Oswald, as a strategist at BGC Partners. How is your day, Mark? Or even ADM Investor Services. What, 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 what <laughs> I Sorry, what am I saying? What am I saying? I'm the wrong person. I nearly, nearly got out of that one. Anyway, so ADM Investor Services. Sorry, I was thinking of uh, somebody else. I don't know who it was. Yes, um, I'm well. Right, I'm well. so I'm not, not. I'm obviously not well today. <laughs> um, uh, Non-farm payrolls. Any surprises expected? Um, I think the the market after that m massive ADP gain yesterday, two hundred fifty three thousand. The street whisper is definitely to the north of um, uh, the one hundred eighty consensus. One hundred eighty would be a very very solid reading. One has to understand that. But the market expectation is going to be higher. Um, there are a couple of little headwinds in there which might actually make it not quite so good as the ADP. The first one is we had a massive 55,000 surge in um, leisure and hospitality uh, payrolls last month, which uh, looked rather overcooked. So it's either going to be revised lower or there's going to be a big payback this month. And secondly, we also had the debt ceiling omnibus budget bill for Argo last month which meant that government wouldn't have been hiring. In fact, they would have probably been letting people roll off. So those two could provide a bit of a headwind. I think that's all a bit moot, though, in the greater scheme of things, because what we're looking at um, is the unemployment rate to stay at 4.4%. Most importantly, we'll be looking very closely at the underemployment rate, which has plunged over the last couple of months. We were stuck in 9.5%, 10 area, which is high historically uh, this time, well, just six months ago. Uh, now it's down to 8.6. It's only 0.7 away from the cyclical low in 2006 of 7.9. And that means that labour demand is very strong and even people who are employed part-time are finding full-time jobs. So the other thing which we're going to be looking at very closely is the wages data expected at 0.2. It always is. That would see the um, annual rate tick up to 2.6. Uh, not necessarily this month, but I think over the coming quarter, all the evidence points to a slight pickup in momentum in wages, and that's something which the Federal Reserve will definitely have to respond to. Nothing today which would uh, is likely to, to puncture the bubble of the, uh, the, the stock market. The no. The highs everywhere. As I, I've, I've said many, many a time, this is still an era of financial repression. The Fed may be edging rates up, but in the greater scheme of things, the target's still 0.75 to 1. The ECB, the uh, Swedish Riksbank are in negative territory, the Bank of England 0.25. So barring um, political risk, which we've imagined this year but hasn't happened, though obviously the UK election next week important, um, or a, a signs of an economic slowdown, we've got precisely the opposite, actually. We've got a sign of a, a fairly good synchronised global pickup. Uh, the instinct to buy the dip, both in equities and in bonds and above all credit, remains there simply because the option of parking your cash in a deposit account is very unappetising given the non-returns that you're going to get. Um, in the long run, yes, this bubble will eventually burst. But uh, today, probably not. OK, let's go on to, uh, we'll, we'll hold that thought. Uh, Trump withdraws the US from Paris Accord. Um, may impact trade deals and uh, innovation going forward, uh, but it just seems to be something that, you know, it's uh, one of the few things you can do, isn't it, really? So well, it, it's sad to reflect that we had so much hope invested in Mr. Trump, and he's, uh, you know, all he's achieved so far is some rather negative tensions with both Canada and Mexico as well as the rest of the world. And this is actually just negative for the US. Um, you know, the alternative energy area has its own momentum. The train's long left the station. It's traveling fairly quickly. And all he does by doing this is probably encourage some of the US alternative energy companies to think, well, maybe we should distribute our capex on this area more to Europe, more to China, more to India, and drives all those countries together. So successfully shooting themselves in the foot. OK, next up we've got... Uh Theresa May's gamble on snap election may backfire. Well, that's, I mean, it depends on which poll. The polls are more volatile. The polls are actually the greatest source of volatility at the moment uh, that there is. Not, nothing, yes, no, I, th I think it's uh, interesting. There's um, a study for, by BMG for the election, Electoral Reform Council today, which suggests that uh, voters, 20% of voters are planning to vote tactically, which compares with 9% back in 2015. And that makes those polls even more unreliable. So everything's just up in the air, and we just we don't well, know, can, we just see how you, it lands. You can also see a situation where, re in recent polling, people you know would have heard, uh, for instance, the things like the dementia tax, 
And when someone polls them, uh, they think, actually, I think <laughs> Theresa May needs a punch in the face for that. Um, and they just say, say they're going to vote Labour, but what they actually do on the day, we shall actually see. So uh, potentially, yeah, it is a gamble. OK, let's go on to... Uh Global equity markets hit record highs, as I said. Um, presumably, uh, there's nothing, to, uh, as you said, there's nothing really to change that in the near term. Well, I mean, I think there are two things where there are, two areas where there are headwinds, and they're important ones, uh, which have fueled a lot of the rally. First of all is banks. Um, low volatility, flatter yield curves is not going to be good for bank earnings, particularly when you look at the comps for Q3 and Q4 last year when we had the Brexit and the Trump shocks. Uh, secondly, the resource sector. Uh, at the moment, you've got iron ore falling, oil prices don't look very stable, and so those are two popular areas which will create a bit, you know, it will requ require people to do a bit of uh, recycling of their portfolios, um, but they, it also means there's a limitation to how much we can drive equity markets higher in, in momentum terms. Okay. Uh, next up... Uh the, it's from Brian Noble from TraderNoble.com. It caught my eye. The S&P index has searched for a new all-time closing high of 2429, but we've got a second Hindenburg omen, technical sell signal to do with market breadth, too complicated to discuss here, which now gives us a signal valid until September. The implication is that at any stage of the next three months, we can have a stock market crash. Music to the ears of some? Absolutely. There are a lot of people. Uh, the irony is actually a lot of those buy the dippers would want that to happen so that they can buy, buy the, the dip. dip. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, go, we're going on to... Uh, uh, heard on Twitter, uh, one of the guests here, regular guests here on Tip TV, Sean Richards, not a yes man economics, uh, with UK house prices falling, manufacturing booming, are we rebalancing? Well, interestingly enough, we've just had the construction PMI, which surged to its best level in quite some time. Um, notably, and the report uh, from market notes uh, that there's been a that residential construction is at a six-month high and non-residential construction is at its best level since March of last year, if their survey is correct. Okay, let's go on to the next tw uh, tweet. David Buick, um, another guest on Tip TV. I find it astonishing that the economy has played virtually no role in this election debate. Labour running the economy would be penury. I can't believe that David Buick would ever be in such a state, but uh, <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, next up, we've got uh, the economic calendar, as we've already discussed uh, in detail. Uh, going on to uh, FX sentiment, where there's been a shift against uh, silver, a shift in favour of uh, dollar Canadian and uh, dollar yen, and against uh, euro sterling, which is about as short as I've ever seen it. So people short up to the eyeballs there. Clearly, they have their hopes on a certain election result. Yes, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, it shows where the skew is. And if you look at it in terms of positioning in the options market, uh, yeah, it sort of also reflects that. Okay, we're going on to uh, Russell 2000 Investors Intelligence. The Russell 2000 Index develops a bullish point figure breakout signal at 13.95 with a price objective of 14.75 and stop loss at 13.50. Just goes on and on and on, either sideways or up. Yes, relentless. Relentless, yes. And uh, next up, the trade of the day, Card Factory, not a place which I'm uh, totally familiar with, um, having not bought one for like 10 years. But uh, uh, we have a bearish uh, price uh, and RSI divergence there, sell around £3.30, objective 306, and stops above 343. Presumably, it's a bit of a play on the, uh, the death of the high street. Uh, partly the death of the high street, and above all, you know, the prevalence of electronic cards nowadays. Exactly. So uh, going on to uh, broker recommendations, uh, Peel Hunt uh, basking in the glory of betting Boohoo right and uh, hiking their target to £2.60. Who would have thought it? EasyJet also, um, HSBC, got it right as a recovery play and they've hiked their target by um, a pound there. And Johnson Matthey, uh, the catalytic converters, uh, so it was my tribute to the Paris Accord and Donald mm -hmm. Trump getting out of it. Uh, very subtle there, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. share, share price around £30.85 at the moment. Uh, Deutsche Bank uh, with a £36 target there. So uh, that is the first section of the finance show. Well, I'll try and get your designation correct. Mark Oswald, strategist, ADM Investor Services International. Thank you for opening the Tip TV finance show today. Pleasure.